Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. Now, if you didn't see our first video, we just started working on this Bally Flip Flop machine from 1976. It's a great game. I've played it before. Uh, we've been fixing this up for a friend of ours. The, uh, the inside of it is where we're going to start. We've got a few issues in there, but mainly it's just dirty. We've removed the play field. Uh, on the previous video, we kind of just went over everything, showed how the condition everything was in. Back glass is in great shape. Playfield's in decent shape. And nothing appears to be missing inside. So uh, the very first thing that I'm going to do is we're going to clean out the bottom of it a little bit more. And I think on this one, I might lift the, uh, I might lift the, the bottom board there out of it um, and put it up on the cabinet here so that we can see it a little better um, as we clean through it. And then we can uh, we can go check it out after we're done. But uh, the very first thing I'm going to do though is get the uh, vacuum cleaner and start cleaning it up a little bit. Or I guess I could I guess if I lift that out, it'll make it easier to vacuum too, wouldn't it? <laughs> so uh, if you're going to lift one of these out, they're different on different uh, different manufacturers. But on this one, there's a little clip there that you take that bolt loose, and then you can move that uh, you can take that washer off of there. And then uh, there's one over here as well. That's two. Three and four. Depending on the model, sometimes you won't have bolts like that. You'll have a big screw. And one might be here and maybe a second one back here. And two screws will hold the whole thing in. So it just depends on the who made it and what year it is and all of that. Um, so yours may be a little bit different. Uh, and then obviously I can't lift this up out of here if certain things are still connected to it. Like for instance, see the wiring. Um here to the chime box so you can disconnect that. Now the chime box is no longer connected. Um, looks like we might have an issue with the power cord. Hmm, I'll look into that. Uh, but usually you can get the thing, uh, hmm, yeah that power thing, I might have to take the power switch off so that we can get it up but uh, you just want to go around and unplug the things that are on the board All right makes the board uh, where everything's pretty much contained on it and we can get it up out of here I've got Jones plugs in the back box I'll unplug so that there's no wires running up to that and then you have to be careful about the power cord there's a little slot that it slides through to give you a little extra room but I think I'm going to have to take that power switch off so that because uh, we don't have enough room here uh, looks like it might double up under there it may actually be zip tied under there well I'll mess with it and figure it out but we'll get it up here where we can clean inside of it and then we can uh, clean off this board as well and start working on the relays busted out the shop vac was able to get the board up on the rails, cleaned out the cabinet, Now you can take as much time with these as you want, but um, you know, I like to clean it up a little bit and then, I mean, you can keep going. <laughs> I've, there are some people that will take everything off of this bottom board, I mean it's literally all just screwed on there. They will take everything off this bottom board and put all the relays and all the wiring and everything in the dishwasher and wash it all. And then if you let it dry, everything's cool. It doesn't ruin anything now. Not my thing. I'm not telling you to do that. Make sure you research that before you do it, but a lot of people do that. Uh, and then once you do that, you could paint this board if you want or do whatever you want or replace it. Do whatever you want. We're not going to take it that far, people. Uh, a couple things that I noticed. Uh, the tilt relay. The coil is loose in there because the screw broke. So there should be a screw holding it in place. That one snapped off. Right? No big deal. Looks like it might have happened to a couple other ones too because they've replaced the screws on a couple of them. And I did find 
the head of screws, two or three of them in the bottom that had snapped. You see what I mean? So apparently it may be an issue on bally's. We'll see as we do our other bally's. Uh, so there was that. Had another fuse clip that's no good. We've got some extra wires floating around. Now at first glance you're going to say, oh well, that broke off probably that or something. It, remember how we were reading that they had multiple coin doors, so that probably didn't go to anything. It's probably used on a different coin door. And if you look, there are a bunch of wires right here that are cut that had tape on them, but it was factory. So the same thing, it's for like if you're using another door. Okay, got a wire here, same thing. They were just, you know, they were to the point where all of these games were similar in function, but not similar in appearance. So they were mass producing wiring harness and stuff and harnesses and things um, that might have extra wires that aren't used on this game. And then there are even some extra switches. So those switches have never had anything installed on them. It just came with the fact from the factory with extra switches that are not used in this game. Um, and so you run into stuff like that, and so you kind of need to, if you see something cut or whatever, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's messed up. It might just be that it came from the factory like that, and I think that's what's going on here with these few ones that I'm finding. Um, so everything's cool. So the, the one with the screw missing, we'll try to fix that, and then I'm going to go through and I'm going to clean all of these relays. So the way that we clean them is, we use an old worn out file. You can get like a, a, a contact burnisher or whatever it's called that's for cleaning relays we use an old file that's worn out that doesn't have hardly any abrasion on it uh, you don't want to use anything too too abrasive because it'll screw up your contacts you don't want to cut them off you know um, but we just go through and clean all of the contacts on every switch <laughs> Now that seems crazy, but it, really it's not that big of a deal. So these four will take me a minute to do maybe. And then these four will take me a minute to do maybe. And then these, you know, see, so, I mean, you're, it's an hour, a couple hours maybe. And then you don't have to do it again for another 50 years or 40 years. What do you think about that? So sometimes you have to adjust them. Whenever this relay pulls in, see the switch on the left? See how that, the, the longer switch is in the holder there and see how it moves the smaller switch a little bit as it hits it that's how you want it you want it to move it just slightly and that actually is like a self-cleaning action it'll rub the contacts will rub each other and clean dirt off of them now see that fourth one is just barely moving so they're all moving it's properly adjusted and you just go through and check all of them like that Sometimes you get one like this, where it breaks from this switch and makes this switch. It goes back and forth. So you just make sure that both of them turn, both of them move a little bit. And you don't want to, uh, you don't ever want all three of them touching at the same time. And then sometimes you get one like this switch, that it's closed right now with the power off, and it opens when the relay pulls in. And so on that one, you just want to look and make sure that when the relay goes back out, that it pushes it a little bit. So all those look good. And you just go through and do every single one of them like that. So that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to clean all of the relay switches. How many did we say? 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And a... Uh, latch and um, a trip and latch relay um, so we'll clean all those first this one's interesting because if it pulls in it's either one way which it is now see how this switch is connected to this one and this one's not connected and then this is the trip relay when it pulls in they are now connected the other way <laughs> right so it's a latch and trip relay. Another thing too, sometimes when you have these and you're in here messing around with them like I'm doing right now, 
or if you have the Gottlieb's with the reset bank uh, that has a whole bunch of relays that one big arm resets. Sometimes if you're in here and you're messing with stuff and so like you leave it like that and then you put it all back together, nothing will work. It's because that's not, that hasn't, re it's, it's in the wrong position. It's in some weird position where the, the designer of the machine, the engineers, never even imagined how it could possibly get in that position. So you might, on the Gottlieb, you might have the game over relay on and the first ball relay on and the player three relay on or something like that where it's just like that would never happen in real life. So if you ever get one that's just completely won't do anything after you mess with it, you might have went in there and got all these in the wrong position. You might have to go mess with a couple of them to get them right. I've had that happen a couple times. It usually is not going to happen with one relay like that, but... Just something to think about. All right, so I'm going to clean all those switches and uh, put that screw in that one, and then uh, I'll come back and we'll look at the next thing. Okay, so I cleaned all the switches. I didn't run into any surprises except uh, on this uh, credit relay, there is a switch that's unused. And on this third shoot relay, there is a switch that's unused. I think this is the, it says there's a three, I think this is the third shoot, and this is a two, I think maybe it's the second shoot, so maybe there's not a coin relay, I don't know. And the reason that looks a little hand done is again, because I think they had a bunch of different coin doors. Well, in the first video we looked at the schematics and there were six different coin doors in the schematics. So I think depending on which one you got, they had to do the coin relays a little different. Um, so that's that. Next up, I think what I'll do is clean the uh, score switches. I mean, the score motor switches. Um, sometimes that unit will come out of there, but I don't think I want to do that. I think I'm just going to clean them as they stand. So it's the same thing. Uh, you just need to get all the switches clean. Now, as this, the way this works is as this motor turns, there is a little lever that runs on the different cams. See how, that, see how this first row here is down now? And then it's up because that little lever passed through that part of the cam that had a, a valley in it. And you see how this one has little bumps on it. So it's making that jump up and down, jump up and down. So it's making switches touch each other. And that this score motor is how it gets the uh, basically the animation that it needs to make any kind of thing happen, like score reels turn and and uh, bonuses work and any of that. Anytime it needs something to move, basically this score motor makes it happen. Um, so there are different switches that will turn on this motor, and when they turn, so if a relay pulls in, like you hit a switch on the play field, it pulls in a relay. The relay turns on this motor. The motor turns, so if the relay is pulled in, it has turned on some of these switches on the score motor. Look at all of them. Um, it's, it'll turn on a couple of those switches, and then as it turns, it like you know if if one of the cams has five bumps on it, it goes bam, 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 and hits that switch five times. Well, that's how you get 50 points. So it's stuff like that. Anytime that you need some kind of motion. Um, you need to do any kind of math, anything like that, and you're going to use this score motor. So same thing, you just got to go through and clean every switch and make sure they're all connecting well. It's a little hard to get to some of them in the middle there. You kind of got to go in this way through the front. But um, Usually you don't have to adjust these much. Sometimes the very top switches will be stuck up in the air because somebody's pushed something inside the cabinet and hit one of them and knocked them up a little bit. Um, it's a good way to get the machine to stop working <laughs> as if you bend up one of those top switches. A lot of times they do something important, uh, like kick the ball out of the out hole or something. So uh, that's the next thing I'll clean, and then uh, on, to the, on to the next part. Okay, on this particular one, I figured out how the uh, screw works. So this screw, if you turn it sideways, it, it unlock latches this. Well, basically this whole thing will swing up which helps you a little bit depending on which switch you're cleaning, but there's really no good way for me to show you how to do that. <laughs> you're going to struggle with it, especially with these stepper units right in the way. So that's the next thing we're going to do. This is the ball count unit, 
and I'm going to take the two screws out of it so that we can kind of lean it back where we can get to it a little better. You can take it all the way off the game if you want, but you have to take all the wires loose, and that ain't a good idea. So we're just going to uh, get it where it can flop around and try not to beat it up too much um, while we're looking at it. So amazingly enough, those are held in by machine screws. They actually have T-nuts in the wood <laughs> to hold it pretty well. And you can get just a little glimpse of what the plywood originally would have looked like. So we're going to take this spider off of here so we can clean the rivets and put a little synthetic grease on there. And then on the other side here, once we get it mounted back, we just need to clean these switches so that they do their thing. Um, basically it needs to know when it's back to the home position, when it resets. Um, you don't want to lubricate these um, plungers or anything that will cause you all kinds of problems. Just don't do it. <laughs> um, you might need to lubricate some of the pivot points of some of these uh, levers and things then. So look for that if you got one that's acting up a little bit or sticking a little bit. Um, but in general it's just like the other ones. You want it where when you pull this in it steps one way you pull that in, it resets back. So that's reset. It's actually working very good. It's just filthy. Filthy! You gotta keep in mind too, this was like 76 by the time they did this. They kind of figured out how to do it by then, so most of the stuff is a pretty good design. Um, but I'm going to pop that spider off. Whenever you do that, you kind of need to remember which direction it was on when you took it off. But it's keyed, so it'll only go two ways. Notice I didn't say one way. <laughs> it'll only go two ways. So I'm going to pop that off, and uh, I'm going to reset it back to home position. Pop it off, and then we'll put it back on. But basically, it's got all of the, the legs at the top and not the bottom. So... Um, if it'll really only go two ways, I just need to remember that. And I'm videotaping it, so on yours you can take pictures. So you can see how the shaft, the way it's formed, it can only go two ways. It can go upside down or the right way. Um, so we're going to clean up those rivets with just some really fine sandpaper. And then we're going to put synthetic grease on it because it's dielectric good stuff right. and don't forget to clean the back of the little fingers too they're pretty clean though already well that one not really but you gotta make sure those are all right too and then since this one's already stepping really good I'm not gonna worry about uh, lubricating the shaft there's if that's see that's vinyl through steel I mean not vinyl nylon through steel you don't really want to put oil on that or anything because uh, if you put the wrong thing on it or just over time the oil uh, the the understanding is is that it may swell the nylon slightly and if it does you are in trouble so it doesn't even need any kind of lubrication because it's nylon so we're just going to leave it alone. Okay, so we've got the rivet shiny again. Put the synthetic grease on it. Now, if you look down at the bottom, the rivets down there have never had a wiper go over them because that part of the disc isn't used. It only turns a few steps and then goes back. Right? So there's never been anything on those bottom rivets. So see how they have the shiny circle around them and then the inside of it is darker? That's because these things are kind of cup-shaped even when they're brand new. So you don't have to worry about getting them too clean, you know. You don't want them filthy, but if you got a couple that aren't perfect, it'll be all right. Because remember, the the little uh, foot rides up over the, the edge, which is obviously higher on all of them anyway, right? So it'll hit it when it hits that. 
Uh, okay, so we're going to put it back together and then we're going to look at the back side. So you can see how simple this whole setup is when this one pulls in. You see it makes that switch. And then the little lever that it has the spring on it grabs another tooth and pushes it up. And since the whole thing's nylon, there's really nothing sticking on this particular one, which is good. And then whenever this one pulls in, see this little post right here? See this switch, how both of them are closed? So when this one pulls in, it goes back to a home position and opens them up. Uh, I don't know if on the first position that'll close again, but we'll see. Yep. So on the very first pull-up of this, it closes both of the switches. So simple as that. That one's working good now. So we've got this second one we've got to do, which basically is the same setup, but it's slightly, uh, slightly uh, less complex. So the switch here isn't even there on this one. And down there, you've only got one switch that it hits. It looks like that might be bent a little bit or something. Now there's two of the little posts, and it's got that one bent up. So we might have to bend that back. I'll mess with it and see if I can figure it out. But this one's ready to be screwed back in. On to the next one. Okay, so I mounted that one back, and so now we're over to this one. I was talking about that switch. This is the coin unit, it says. So I'll show you some of the stuff you run into sometimes. See that switch, how it's mounted right now? And see there, there is an extra, see there's a post right there and a post down there? Well, the post down there is in the same place over here, but on this one it's got this other one added. So what's that all about? Okay, so it's going to be hard to show you this, but basically that switch is closed right now. Right? So when I, when I hit this relay, it resets. And look what it did to the switch. See how it's all bent way up in the air and doesn't just doesn't look right? It looks almost like the switch is mounted in the wrong spot or something. Alright, so this is the coin unit. So we'll say this is the home position. So you pull this one in. We'll say that's position uh, two, three, four. And then it won't go anymore. So it has four positions. It's called the coin unit, and in all four of those positions, that switch is closed. So why would there even be a switch there if that's how it's supposed to work? It's because that's not how it's supposed to work. So somebody has messed with this, and this blade should go on that side. So now... switch is open, right? So let's reset it again. See how it's bent. So we're going to bend it backwards basically straight, you know. So it's straight. It's mounted where it mounts. This is position one. Okay. Position two. Position three. Oh, it's touching it. Position four, it opens it, right? Reset it. And see how when I move it, it moves the small blade a little bit, so they are touching. So that's position one, it's closed. Position two, it's closed. Position three, it's closed. Where is it? Yep, it still is. Position four, it's open. Okay, I think I'm gonna actually bend it just a little bit more so that it it's more obviously open. I mean, more obviously closed on three. I'm gonna have to finagle it a little bit. Don't worry about the finagling. All right, so there's fourth position. It's open. First position. Oh, I got it bent now. Now I did it. Alright, okay, first position, it's closed, second position, 
third position it's not quite touching it fourth position it opens it right and that way you get a little bit of movement out of that smaller blade like you want so the, the way this one works this is the coin unit so basically what it's doing is is whenever you um, whenever you hit start I don't know if it's the I don't know if on this one they have it on the start button or whatever but since there can only be four players it doesn't let you start more than a four player game so so it it should that switch needs to open after four so that you can't keep it won't keep taking your your money away from you so anytime you run into a switch that's always closed and it never opens no matter what happens well it must be wrong right or if it's always open and it never closes well it must be wrong or they wouldn't have put a switch there a switch is the switch it took me forever to figure that out but once you figure that out everything makes sense so you can just look, I don't, I don't have the schematic, well I do have the schematics over there, but I don't have the schematics in front of me, but you can just look at that switch and you know automatically that it must be wrong because it's always closed. Now it's closed three times and it opens on the fourth time. Well that sounds more like what they would do, or they might have it where it's closed one time and open three times, you know, something like that. That at least makes sense, but it just never opening, something's got to be wrong. And usually whenever they have like a switch mounted, it's not mounted to be all bent crooked and everything. It's mounted to be straight. Or they would have mounted it slightly in a slightly different spot. You know. Or they would have mounted that little post on the wheel in a slightly different spot. So it, there, there should never be a time when stuff is bent way out of shape or it's always closed or it's always open. So, so that's that. And then I think I'll get away with I don't have to uh, dismount the front. I just have to. I can take the screw off right there to clean the... Uh, the wipers on this one. Okay, so two of these fuses have already screwed up, fuse holders, so uh, the other two are probably not far behind. So we're going to swap it and put in these more heavy duty modern ones, right? So uh, I just moved it up out of the way. I'm going to carefully unsolder the wires, solder them onto here, and we'll be good to go. Well, it did a good job while it lasted. So, got new ones in. So this one is supposed to be 10 amp. They had a 15 amp. And this one's supposed to be 8 amp. They had a 20 amp. That ain't good. Don't want to do that, people. These two are tied together because they're both... Uh, this is the source. And they're both uh, the lamp voltage. So that's that so I'm gonna do just a little bit of housekeeping put a little electrical tape there because it, it was on there and it came off whenever I was vacuuming it um, oh and I did replace that screw in the relay I have I got a bunch of those I keep around just in case you know and then another thing I noticed this is the female part of the Jones plug so you can see how how that works the plug pushes down in there but this one, they're bent up here on this end. Tell they're not quite right. I'm going to try to bend them down again. You want to be careful not to break these. If you break them, they can be replaced, but big pain. Making them a little tighter. All right. So uh, a little electrical tape, and then we're ready to lay it back down in the cabinet, and uh, we can move on to the next part of the machine. Okay, folks, so we've got it all back where it goes, and it's much cleaner now, and all of the relays have been cleaned, and all of the relays have been adjusted, and the, the score motor has been cleaned. I didn't have to adjust any of those, by the way. They all seem to be working fine. Um, the two stepper units have been cleaned. We adjusted that one switch on the coin unit, which, by the way, probably wouldn't have killed the game or anything, but it's just a minor thing. Uh, cleaned everything up. Replaced the fuse holders. Bolted it all back in place. 
And that's that. So we got we got the bottom board, the mech board, pretty much everything um, to do with that, to the best of our knowledge, is working good now. Now we can't test it because we haven't done any of the rest of the machine. <laughs> so next time we'll have to do the back box um, because this mech panel works in conjunction with the uh, insert panel, which is the one on the back that we showed in the first video. So, we'll see you on that video, but I hope you learned something. I learned something, because I always learn something. hope you enjoyed it. Leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. We didn't have to do that, but we did anyway. Um, make sure uh, to check out my brother Donnie. That's our brother channel. He's literally my brother Donnie. Uh, lately, he always does all kinds of cool videos. He's pretty wild. Uh, lately, we have bought a little tiny building that used to be a grocery store, a little tiny grocery store in this old town near here, and uh, we are fixing it up and uh, working through it, and uh, we're trying to fix it up so that we can rent it to kind of help revitalize the downtown area of that uh, town. So if you like old pinball machines, you might like old buildings. <laughs> you don't get to play them, though, but you get to open a business in it and earn money, so that's cool. Uh, so go check that out. It's the my, my Brother Donnie is the name of the channel. And then uh, we'd like to thank everybody that's been using our Amazon links, too. If you don't know about that, down below our videos, there is a link to Amazon. If you go to that link to buy something on Amazon, it gives us a little tip because we sent you there. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, we will see you on the next video. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it. And leave your comments below, and we'll, uh, we'll catch you on the next one.